Once upon a time, what was said Valentine in a place known as Hannigan Mine. A legend began, every woman. My Bloody Valentine is a 1981 slasher film directed by George Mahalka and starring Paul Kelman, Lori Hallier, Neil Affleck. Keith Knight, Alf Humphreys, Cynthia Dale, Don Frax, Larry Reynolds, Patricia Hamilton, and Peter Cowper. The film opens in a mine. Looks like someone was too cheap to spring for a motel room, huh? That's suggestive. He gets the first base and... Tomorrow is Friday the 13th. It's shift change at the mine and all these guys are going to shower together. Hey, you wish you never came back. Especially now since Sam is going out with Axel. <laughs> Let's get off my nose. Thanks for bringing that up, asshole. They race out of there, and wow, they're really pushing this Valentine shit. They meet up at the dance hall, and it looks like everyone has a significant other, except for Forever Alone here in the corner. Uh, yeah, well, uh, of course you're right, Mabel, but I think we'd all be better off if you played down the fact that it's the first Valentine's dance in 20 years. Why? <laughs> Where are you going, son? I always go this time of day. Another beer and a real good nose pick. Can you get that with fries and make it a combo? Here's some TJ exposition. It's not my fault he couldn't make it on his own. But now that he's back here, he's my son and he's working in the mine. I might as well go too. All of this will have to be rewashed. I'm really sorry, baby. You fucking asshole! The mayor gets a Valentine's gift. If there's one thing I like better than Christmas candy, it's Valentine's candy. Man, it's all the same candy, just molded into different shapes. Nope, it's a nice cut of meat. Did that dog just bang its head against the police vehicle? Here's some bar hoot nanny and the world's worst bartender. This time of year, bad things coming. My words you hear. Hey look, Bert's Bees. The barkeep delivers some backstory on why these old folks are so touchy about Valentine's Day. I was the one who found <laughs> He probably should have cooked that longer. He killed the two supervisors who had left the post the year before. Then he cut out their hearts. Every February 14th, Harry comes back to town. It could be you. I know what I'm saying. You forget about having a party at all on Saturday night. Or you may not live to see daylight. I don't think they took him seriously. It was only 20 years ago. You guys are in your 30s. You should remember that shit. Here's an awkward moment, and TJ obviously still holds a flame for Sarah. The chief and mayor try to find out where the hell Harry Warden is, then find out that it's a human heart. You remember Harry Warden? God, of course I remember. Those were terrible murders. This is terrible acting! No one notices this guy walking down the street. Mabel is up late washing the decorations that Howard fucked up. And hey, this is a nice gift. Roses are red, violets are blue. One is dead, and so are you. And she's dead. So when you think about it, Mabel's death is Howard's fault. We're pushing 30, let's hang out in a junkyard. <laughs> hey, <laughs> this is what I really call junk food. How much longer, Hollis? Reason. Hey, relax, this thing ain't no microwave. Look, it's a small town, it does have a McDonald's, and most places close up at 8. I get it. 
Axel and TJ have a harmonica jam session, then discuss a love triangle they're suddenly in the middle of. Look, you left. You left. You went away, and we didn't know where you were or, or when the hell you were coming back. I ain't gonna back off for you, TJ. You stay the hell away from Sarah. Axel does have a point because TJ ditched Sarah's ass. The Chief still can't find out where Harry is and heads to the laundromat to talk to Mabel about the situation. Mabel! Mmm, something smells good. <laughs> Holy shit! Man, he sure got her extra crispy. Oh, in Granville, we'll have police crawling all over this place and we'll have a hell of a panic on our hands. You just mentioned that Harry's back, and this town won't be worth the powder to blow it to hell. That actually doesn't sound like a bad idea. The townsfolk would be on alert for a guy in a miner's mask walking around with a pickaxe drenched in blood. Kind of like what happened last night. Oh, uh, that's a hole in one. It happened once. It happened twice. Cancel the dancer, it'll happen thrice. Oh, and the dance is canceled. The it is. There'll be no dance tomorrow night, and no parties either. Do you understand me? Do you really think you have the authority to stop a private party? Uh, isn't she at work? TJ, do you ever get that not-so-fresh feeling? And they're back together, I guess. Who knows? That night, Sarah gets creeped out while walking home, and hey, thanks for shining that flashlight directly into my face, Chief. You hear about Mabel Osborne? I'm a part-time lover. She got it just the way I said. Heart attack my ass. Just give me a drink and shut the fuck up. The gang plans a party at the mine, much to the chagrin of Donald Downer here. Beware of what you make fun of, you little asshole. Who? You! Forget about having a party at all tomorrow night. Or you'll be sorry. He goes out to set up a prank and tests it once, twice, three times. <laughs> Holy shit! That's a real drag. That came for you, though. Oh, no. Hey, it's actually candy. And this is the moment when the chief realized he would die alone. It's party time, and here's a sweet neckerchief alert. There's some partying about with this guy checking the hot dogs for some reason. Who is that? You didn't stop the party. Man, the chief is popular tonight! Sarah drops a bombshell, sort of, and TJ is really bad at fighting. Thanks for killing the party, guys. And Axel splits. Elsewhere, there are folks getting it on. You know what we need? Yeah, I got one right here. No, I meant a couple of beers. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have to get a little more loaded if I'm going to fuck this guy. It gives it flavor. What is this? Oh, wow. What are those idiots really think she's funny? That gives it flavor, too. Harry stalks, and aren't these the cheapest water spigots ever? How about a lift, honey? Don't shake the beer, asshole. This kill gets an A plus for creativity. Here's a bad idea. The mine. The mine. Yeah, it'll be great. Come on, it's supposed to be like a roller coaster, isn't it? It's two thousand feet down. How bored are you in this town? But TJ reigns on their parade. Where do you think you're going? We're just gonna go for a quick ride and come right back up. Believe me, you can't take them down there. You know the rule. No women in the mine. 
and they're on their way down. Hey, Hollis! We'll meet you in ten minutes over at the main shaft. They're going to fuck. How romantic. Meanwhile, on the surface, all hell breaks loose. What is it? What's the matter? How long did it take for him to walk from his girlfriend fountain to Party Central? Everyone then proceeds to orderly get the fuck out of there. TJ and Axel head down to get them out of the mine. Anything happens to Sarah, your fault. You never should have let him go down there. I told him about the women rule. Meanwhile, down under the ground. Is he? No. <laughs> gotcha. Hey, it's all fun and games until you're forced to eat one of your co-workers. Turn the damn lights off. The Popo gets alerted and TJ finds the group in the mine, immediately leaving with Hollis to find the young lovers. And the ladies are left with this asshole. Well, looks like they got screwed. <laughs> Oh man, Hollis has something on his mind. Surprise! Ah, I guess he got nailed. Fuck this shit, I'm out of here. Patty freaks out. We have to get out of here. No! Stop it! Then Axel shows up, probably because he heard that fucking bitch slap. Then Axel breaks four of TJ's ribs. The elevator is roached, so it's time to climb a few thousand feet. Patty is a pain in the ass. Hey, Howard. <laughs> that thump was hilarious! I do not understand why they're going back down. Axel takes them on a shortcut and damn, that's deep. He stays behind as TJ and the girls go ahead. My heart will go on and on. You gotta get out of here. Can you just leave him here? You jump in and save him then! TJ splits from the ladies for a few seconds, and it's an instant cave-in. Ooh, right in the tummy. Sarah finds TJ again, and they attempt to get out, and oh shit, he's coming. The card system begins to work, which means we can fight on it. They fall off, and finally help arrives. Here's a nice move, and they enter the abandoned section. Are they wrecking everything on purpose? <laughs> Plot twist! Dad? <laughs> TJ asks Axel if he wants to rock, and the mind collapses right on Axel's ass. I got a call from Eastfield late this evening. They said that Harry Warden died five years ago. Another plot twist! Harry Warden was dead the entire time. Henniger, I'll be waiting in hell for you! <gasps> Harry! Harry, I'm coming! Man, he was cutting his arm off before James Franco made it cool. This whole fucking town is going to die! That's what I'm saying the day I move. <laughs> Sarah, be my bloody valentine. Coming in that flood of slashers in 1981, My Bloody Valentine sets above those films by having a pretty cool backstory and some great kills. Though were cut by the MPAA, partly because of Friday the 13th and partly because of John Lennon's murder. A hunk of that footage has been put back into the film, so enjoy! 
I had to watch this on basic cable in the 80s, so even the R-rated cuts awesome to me. These aren't really teenagers, but there's that thing where the younger people are blowing off the sage adults and isolating themselves to be slaughtered. That is Slasher 101 right there. The interesting thing about My Bloody Valentine is that it never had a sequel, though it was remade in the 2000s, and the killer is to this day referred to as Harry Warden when you talk about him. You know Harry was dead through the duration of the movie and Axel was the killer. This film is a standout in a market that was suffocating itself. It's a classic that you get to watch every year at this time. All right. Hey, all right. All right. 